Hey everybody, welcome back to Author Eke. Today I have Gregory Gelhog. I have written a gold book. You can see by uh, the back of those little uh, back of those little things twirling around. Maybe well, you can guess what it's about. So I'm going to let them introduce themselves, and then we're going to talk about their book. And we're going to you know how the author Eke goes. We'll take it from there. Whatever pops into our mind, we're going to talk about. Uh, Gregory Gale, whoever wants to go first, uh, go for it. Welcome. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you, Travis. We're delighted to be here. And um, so what we've been doing for the last 40 years is we've been working with sacred geometry and not only researching it, but developing different tools that are all based on the principles of sacred geometry, because sacred geometry is everything in how universe is organized all the rhythms and patterns and principles, everything is organized in very precise and specific ways. And when we're in alignment with that, then our life goes better. It's kind of like, you know, the universe knows how to work. And when we are resonant with that, then, you know, things work in a great way. So you can feel it. It's palpable because it's all about how energy forms into the way that it needs to form to come into physical dimension. And uh, so we wrote a book that was published in January. It's called Sacred Geometry, the Universal Language of Divine Alignment. And at this point, I'm going to hand it over to Gregory and let him fill in yeah. any more details, okay? Excellent. Thank you. Uh -huh. So... As Gail said, we've been doing this for 40 years. And what we've been doing, for me, I went through a very strong Kundalini experience, which means energy was flowing up from the earth through my body, opening all my different chakras. And the energy was flowing so strongly through the, my body that it was literally burning holes in my hands and my feet as the photonic energy moved through the chakras in those areas. But after a period of time, a couple of years, I started balancing this energy and communicating with higher dimensional understanding. I could literally start seeing the energy of physical matter before it manifests mm -hmm. and what physical matter does is it follows particular archetypes particular patterns that designs and creates everything in the physical dimension that we bump into and see and touch and so we are multi-dimensional beings as well mm -hmm. only about 10 percent of us shows up here so that's what we're interacting with but on higher dimensional levels things like our emotional body it exists around us and in the fourth dimension and so when people are looking at auras or some people are able to see what's going on around someone mm -hmm. that's what they're tuning into to a great extent things like the emotions that exist around the body mm -hmm. or the mental aspects that exist on higher dimensional levels. So what we have found is that by working with certain patterns and rhythms and cycles, mm -hmm. like some of these pieces next to me that we've constructed, we can actually start to resonate like a T or excuse me, like a C tuning fork mm -hmm. will resonate with a C tone. And so when we create an exact model of the way universe works, we can bring that energy into our environment. It's like going out into nature mm -hmm. and the way that affects us we all feel so much calmer, more connected, mm -hmm. because nature is doing everything right. It's doing it the way it's supposed to be doing it. 
the trees are following the patterns of taking in carbon dioxide, putting out oxygen, working with moisture. And what happens is when we're in a natural environment, we start shifting our field. And that's what we found we can do with these geometries that we have around us. Interesting. So do you think there's places on the on Earth that are more likely to be able to experience this fourth dimension like the middle of the pyramids or in Kefron's pyramid or chaos? They say there's an energy force. I've been in I've been in both of them. There's an energy force there and other places on the on the earth that are different than you know well, general like what, walking outside. What, Okay, Travis, what you're talking about there is a geometry. I mean, that's mm -hmm. what the pyramids were drawing upon, mm -hmm. certain sacred geometric principles, like working with the shapes of the triangles on the right. surface, the nature of the square base that is working with earth energy, mm -hmm. the angles at the tips that uh, focuses that energy into a higher dimensional relationship. Mm -hmm. So pyramids are doing that. Now, there are particular places, for example, a lot of ancient sites and a lot of churches that were built over some of these pagan sites, sites like Stonehenge. And there were people that worked with a lot of these ancient sites in England and found that they existed on something called ley lines, which is earth flows of energy. So just like the human body, the earth has a circulatory system, an energetic system, where energy seems to flow and connect. And so there are places where we can beyond these crosshairs of energy, like in the so-called Bermuda Triangle, is another one of those where the energy seems to shift because of the place on the Earth that it's relating to. So what are y'all's background? How did you keep them? You had uh, in the instance of long instance of this energy. So what are you guys in background and, and to be able to formulate the geometric shapes or what would be take what would help for that? Well, you know, um, traditional academic backgrounds don't necessarily help you in situations that are, you know, new and, and you know, um, not your traditional way of doing work in the world. Well, I agree 100%. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> so we got to draw on a lot of other things. So I draw on my background as an artist. Okay. Um, as an artist, you know, I think an artist is an adventurer, an explorer, mm -hmm. really looking for answers. Um, I got very engrossed in the work of Buckminster Fuller. <coughs> Excuse me, if you're familiar with him, he created the geodesic dome. And wrote lots of books and talked about geometry and tetrahedrons and all kinds of things because he wanted to understand better how universe worked. <coughs> Excuse me. And mm -hmm. um, I was fascinated with his work. Now, along with all of this, you know, this is also part of our spiritual evolution. And I was, and, and you'll hear from Gregory in a minute, that part of my path was to understand consciousness was to connect with the higher realms of myself was to expand intuition and really understand all the different facets of who i am so in that exploration it took me into really wanting to understand this cosmology mm -hmm. and geometry sacred geometry seemed to help me understand that explain it better than anything else that I came across. And in addition, I was also, I could feel things. I was, I'm very kinesthetic and I could feel the energy that was coming off of the different geometries that Gregory was building when we met. And so he came about it from another tangent, again, 
not necessarily the traditional pathway. Right, right. Yeah. I get that. So I where you how did how did uh, I mean well, that's what... I know that some religions have geometry built into the religion, right? Like, <laughs> uh, like Islam. All of the mosques are they're very geometrically formed. The windows, everything's you know geometry kind of centric, if I'm not mistaken. So, how, how's that? How's that work? And how did how did you come about this? Okay. Well, as I shared before. Going through that Kundalini experience, mm -hmm. moving energy through my body, I started seeing patterns. I started communicating with higher dimensional energies, which is everything is consciousness. That's what we mm -hmm. start out talking about in our book. And we can communicate with that consciousness, it communicates with us. And so, when you look at what's going on in Islam, they have an understanding in their religion that God, higher dimensional aspects of our being are not to be um, expressed as human beings, as, mm -hmm. as, a, um, as a reflection of mm -hmm. the human body. Mm -hmm. And so they have reflected that higher understanding in a totally geometric sense, which is part of what gives rise to the immense amount of information that they've put into their tiling, into the patterns on their moss, and mm -hmm. what they're working with that way. But even in Christianity, you find throughout the Bible, throughout sacred texts, mm -hmm. there are many um, illustrations of numerical information that's carried on. Mm -hmm. And for example, um, in the Catholic Rosary, there are 54 beads. There are twice that in the malas of Eastern religions with 108 beads. And 54 and 108, when you work with them as degrees, they show us particular angles that are found in the way the body is created, the way plants and animals are created, even in the way the sun and the moon and the earth relate to each other can be found in some of these different numerical um, aspects that come down to us. In Islam, they talk about 108 as mm -hmm. a number of God. And so you would, or Allah, I should say, but the point is, these numbers are hidden throughout all sacred texts worldwide. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting when you look at the pyramids in Egypt and the pyramids that are found in Mesoamerica with the Mayans and Aztecs. These pyramids, even though they're almost half a world away from each other, they share many common angles and many aspects that really, um, there's one author, Graham Hancock, who was looking at some of these aspects uh, around mm -hmm. the world mm -hmm. in different religions. And his um, theory, which has been pretty closely proven now, or, that there was an advanced civilization that existed prior to the flooding that happened over 9,600 years ago, when now science has found that there were fragments of a... Um, of celestial bodies, comets that hit the northern hemisphere where we had so much um, depth of ice, mm -hmm. a couple of miles, that it was almost immediate flooding into the oceans. This happened 12,000 years ago, 9,600 years ago, and it wiped out any advanced civilizations. But the mm -hmm. few survivors that 
carried forth information into the different um, different groups of hunter gatherers around the world. What happened is we see almost overnight husbandry started happening. Mm. All these animals were suddenly domesticated. All these different foodstuffs from different types of grains. Mm -hmm. There's over a hundred in in Central America and South America alone of different types of plants. And some of them, it's really complicated what you have to go through to get these plants to produce food. And yet, almost overnight, the world seemed to shift about 10,000 years ago. And a lot of these numbers were carried forward in different religious texts like the Rig Veda, which was written with 10,800 stanzas, uh, excuse me, yeah, 10,800 wow. stanzas, and it had 40 syllables per stanza. Mm -hmm. Right. I think that book is Chariots of the Gods. Chariots of the Gods. That's the one that uh, the Graham had. Yeah, I read that a long, I read that a long time ago. That just sparked my mind. How, how do you, so is your book based on uh, like research or just things that you've got, uh, to talk to other people that have similar uh, uh instances of what you went through or people that have the theory of the geometric forms, you know, mathematicians or, you know, philosophers or whoever, how did you come up with all the information? That's 40 years. That's a lot of time. Only thing I've done for 40 years is drink beer. Oh, that's good beer. Hmm? Yeah. Mm hmm. We were thirsty for that information, so we were gathering it from everywhere that we could. We were getting involved with all kinds of different scientists, physicists, mathematicians who um, who had not your traditional ideas, mm -hmm. but who were really looking for how do we explain 
like what's really going on here, not just looking at this as an abstract adventure. <clears throat> so that was extremely important for us. And the other piece is, is that we really work with our guidance. We get a lot mm -hmm. of information that way. We've opened ourselves up to that conscious exploration, realizing that there's so much knowledge and consciousness that we can tap into. And so we've really blended all of that with our experience mm -hmm. and, um, and data from how this has been affecting people because we've created tools over the last 40 years that have made a difference in people's lives. So do you think that over that, did you talk about architecture and everything? You believe architectures, you know, like Franklin Wright, how, you know, how he designed things. And so do you, th you think architecture is going back to a more of a geometrical type form, like to some of the, you know, the buildings they're building now, or do you think any of them have the same thing of, this building has to be shaped like this with this type of geometrics and this dimensions to be able to be, you know, feng shui or whatever they call that, basically. Okay, we've got um, feng shui is yeah. one way of working with the energy that um, is used in China, and it comes from um, a different belief system mm -hmm. that was started in India before that, but. Bottom line, architecture, yeah, a lot of it is not at all connected to sacred geometry in the mm -hmm. same way that certain ancient churches and religious sites were connected to sacred geometry, mm -hmm. which is the way that creation has evolved, the way creation expresses itself. So what we're working with, and a lot of the information in our book is new. It's not coming from any place where someone has written it down before. Mm -hmm. We're sharing things that um, the interesting thing is we're sharing things that are, are just self-explanatory. When you do things like take the diameter of the moon and add it to the diameter of the earth, two known frequencies, mm -hmm. two known numbers in miles, and you turn it into degrees, you get a geometry that is um, this geometry that's sitting right next to me. And the um, the sun and the moon create different geometries mm -hmm. when you take their diameters and add them together. So there are many things that create resonance. That's, again, like I was saying, when you have a C tuning fork, you can start to resonate with a C tone if that's how it's tuned. Well, well we're tuned as human beings to work with certain energies. And we've gotten away from those energies in modern technology that surrounds us with a lot of concrete and rebar that stops natural like magnetism. And then we bring in all these different electromagnetic frequencies from radio waves to gamma waves x-rays, the whole spectrum. We only as human beings see 0.035% of that electromagnetic spectrum, but it's affecting us. And we can demonstrate that with so many different um, instruments. And what mm -hmm. we found is that some of the things that we build, we can create a field of frequency where those negative frequencies don't impact us, don't disconnect us the way mm -hmm. they, um, they do if we don't have these geometries around us. So we can shift the fields of our environment rather than 
to try to block everything because we can't mm -hmm. block it or what we're trying to do right now, this communication wouldn't work if we stopped all the electromagnetic frequencies. Mm -hmm. So we have to find ways to balance it in our bodies. And that's what we've been doing and studying with our tools, with things like these pendants that we're wearing that have two sides. We found a way to take three-dimensional geometries and compress them into two-dimensional analogs, patterns, mm -hmm. that will relate to three-dimensional energy. Because we're three-dimensional beings, so we need to work with the energy that affects us here in this reality. So what kind of like advice, or how would somebody know that they have this intersectional geometry, or what, the, 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 what you had, how, how, how can you, how do you be able to be more tuned with what's around from that perspective? What would you, what, what would you say? Well, I think advice. to start you know, being in tune with nature and um, is is very natural. You know, when you go into a beautiful place by running water and the sound of birds, our bodies resonate with that. We feel it. We also resonate with going into um, uh, a traffic jam, you know, when we're there. Right. Oh, yeah. People are honking their horns. Our bodies are resonating with that, too. Then the question is, what do we really want? And the more that we can resonate with the natural environment, the mm -hmm. more we can, you know, work with the positive aspects of our life and our body. A lot of people feel a tremendous amount of separation and fear and all kinds of things because of what's going on on the planet. And what we are really promoting and working with people with our tools is supporting them no matter where they are in being able to stay connected because connection is essential. You know, we are more than just this physical body and that soul energy is essential for our life. So when we are connected, life flows in a much better way. And so that's really what our, our work supports people in that flow. So we've developed, like Gregory was saying, different pendants that people can wear that are you know, bringing together these geometries, different three-dimensional geometries that affect well. So, what kind of tools do you guys, or where can people get a hold of you and and you know check all this stuff out? Uh, so, where, where can everybody get a hold of you at? Yeah. Excellent. Well, the first interview I ever did like this <laughs> on this topic. That's great. Oh, uh, you guys have a picture of your book or anything or? or... With you, Handy? Yeah. Okay.
Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Excellent. Well, excellent. Excellent. Well, I wish you the best, Gregory and Gail. I really appreciate the time you took. And, man, at 40 years of work, that's amazing to me. I mean, that's, that's, that's tremendous. So I uh, hope all the best and everything. But folks, go check out their book. I mean, uh, you want to get some different, uh, maybe new look on things, right? Maybe you need something to get you out of the a valley or, you know, kind of perk up a little bit. Excellent. Thank you.